The next one is an app you can download from the uh, App Store, the Apple App Store. It runs on iPad and iPhone, and we've got this product deployed in three or four hospitals in Europe. We haven't cracked the code in North America, but this is intended for a nurse, a doctor, a physician's assistant, and it's called SAP Electronic Medical Record. It's all secure, so if this device is being shared in a hospital, each, each person needs a log on because it's accessing data that's controlled by you know, the HIPAA compliance laws. And um, I log in. First thing I see is it recognizes who I am as a doctor. I have all my patients. I can sort them by you know, various lists, so you know, different wards in the hospital. And I'll pick Geronimo. And this is all fake data. So we have permission from these, these models that we can make up information about their health record, because I have been called out on that. But we believe in healthcare that the record is going to start living with the consumer. And we want to provide a very secure place that's buttoned down where I can use my record and take it anywhere I go in the world. And I always have, it, I always have access you know, to it. And it has all the things that, that you, know, you would expect. So all the patient's charts, all their vital signs you know, over time, any documents that have like a physician's referral is all stored you know, in, the, in the patient's medical record. The images, so this person has had some head scans and these are all approved by the bodies that, that approve images in, in medicine. And I can open one specifically. I can increase the brightness. I can size it, you know, moving it around, making it bigger and smaller. And I think the day is coming when this app will be running on the wall of the, of, of the room that the patient's in. So the doctor has a much more personal experience. My daughter broke her arm, very scary. She got stepped on by a horse. And we're looking at these images, and it's, you know, there's people walking in and out, and they're hard to see. <clears throat> and um, so this, this, this gives, you know, that intimate patient um, doctor, uh, you know, interaction more credibility. We did some other things. One of the things that doctors asked us was they wanted to compare images over time. So I can use these images side by side. I can treat them independently. I can lock them together so they move in, in unison. And I can make comparisons about you know, how a, a certain condition is progressing over time. Here's what's happening. I mean, if you look at machines now, take a tractor that's made by Caterpillar that's in a mine. That machine is communicating and sharing its performance data with the network. And uh, there's a huge construction company in Omaha, Nebraska, and we went on to w in one of these mines. And if you haven't been in one, they're unbelievable, how much, how much earth, earth they move. But we're, what we're trying to do is get these devices to, to feed, to, to, that's a data source. So if you think about an application, it has a data source. You write down a contact number in your, in your uh, address book. It updates the name and the phone and the email address. That's stored in a database. That becomes a source that other applications can access. So like when you sign up for Facebook, it says, do you want me to go through your whole contact list? And so it reads that data source. Machines now are being engineered to share information about themselves with the network. So um, a water heater, for example, I met with a, a water heater manufacturer in Wisconsin, wants to put a Wi-Fi chip in a water heater that tells the plumber how it's performing, you know, what the pressure points are, the temperature variations, and these applications are now receiving this information, and, um, you know, you're able to do something. You can order a part, you can do this, you can do that. So on the shop floor, it's all about machines, and it's about making things or moving things through production so what we're trying to do is work with the people that make these machines so that we're receiving this information and it's being stored and, and then can be acted upon. So if a machine needs more lubricant or if it needs to have its oil changed or the coolant you know, is, is out of whack, we want to receive that information and um, um, you know, allow someone to fix it or enhance the process in some way. The other thing that's happening is the point of sale, so the front end, is starting to talk to the machine. So as products move, 
through the supply chain and out the door, that, that data point with, with some technology that, that we're innovating is actually integrating back to the manufacturing process and you know, cranking up or lowering or, or dialing back you know, production. So um, very interesting space for us. And we're doing it in the automotive industry you know, t right now with companies like Porsche and Audi and, and Ford and others.